This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's about 5.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Time on Monday. That's just 4.30 p.m. Central Time. We're coming on this afternoon to talk to you about a, uh, a potential tropical cyclone that's developed here in the Gulf of Mexico. And we're going to start off here with the big picture. And you can see this sprawling area of low pressure uh, that stra straddles both sides of Central America from the Eastern Pacific all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. And we're starting to see a circulation take shape here in the south, uh, far southern Gulf of Mexico, about 470 miles south southeast of Brownsville, Texas. But we don't really want to pay much attention to the center of this system because the weather extends hundreds of miles to the north and east of the center. You see this large area of cloudiness, showers and thunderstorms. We already have tropical storm force winds in this area. But the big story, like it is with most tropical systems, is going to be the rainfall and the potential for coastal flooding. So what we're looking at here as we get into portions of coastal Texas from uh, uh, southeast Texas to Houston, Galveston area, Corpus Christi, all the way down to Brownsville, in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Everywhere you see in green here is under a flood watch. And this means there's the potential for flooding and flash flooding over the next several days with heavy rainfall already starting to move into portions of the Gulf Coast. And this threat of flooding is going to continue as we move through the week with widespread uh, rainfall totals of 5 to 10 inches affecting places like Houston, Galveston, Corpus Christi, Victoria, inland up into the Texas Hill Country into San Antonio, down into southern Texas, deep south Texas, the lower Rio Grande Valley. We could see some areas with isolated rainfall totals as high as 15 inches. And in parts of Texas have seen a fair amount bit of rain over the last few weeks, so we have some saturated ground. The stage is set for uh, possibly significant flooding impacts uh, as we move through the week. So that, flash fl that flooding risk, we're going to walk through it here in a minute, it. But these heaviest rainfall totals will move around and may depend uh, somewhat on the track of the center of this system as it becomes a tropical storm and moves into the coast of Mexico over the next couple of days. But the rainfall threat is really going to pick up. This is the flash flooding risk through Tuesday morning. And you can see this slight risk of excessive rainfall all the way across coastal Louisiana, southwest Louisiana into the uh, upper Texas coastal region. But as we get from Tuesday morning into Wednesday morning, we see that threat tick up in, in this red area, in particular from south of Lake Charles, Beaumont. Port Arthur, Houston, Galveston, down to uh, just north of Corpus Christi. That's the area at highest risk of flash flooding from Tuesday into Wednesday. And then as we move from Wednesday into Thursday, that flooding risk shifts westward and inland into places like Victoria, Corpus Christi, up into the hill country, San Antonio, just to the south of Austin, but also still includes the Houston Galveston area. So again, multiple days of heavy rainfall are expected in portions of uh, uh, much of the Texas coast and even into portions of southwestern Louisiana. The other uh, threat that's coming from water is going to be from coastal flooding. We could see storm surge inundation across much of the Texas coastline. We have uh, coastal flood warnings in effect from southwestern Louisiana through Beaumont, Port Arthur, Houston, Galveston area with coastal flood watches in effect for places like Corpus Christi down to Brownsville. We could see inundation uh, of two to four feet above ground level from Sargent up to Sabine Pass with the uh, highest values expected in portions of Galveston Bay where that long fetch of, of easterly and southeasterly flow is going to pile the water into Galveston Bay. We're already seeing water levels starting to rise now. It's only Monday. Those uh, water levels are going to stay elevated and continue to rise as we go through Tuesday into Wednesday as that water piles into the bay over multiple tide cycles. Could see one to three feet of inundation south of Sargent all the way down through the rest of the lower uh, middle and lower Texas coast and into portions of southwestern Louisiana from Sabine Pass over to the Vermilion Cameron Parish line and onto the wind front you can see the extent of the tropical storm force winds with this system extend out almost 250 miles to 300 miles to the north of the center. So even though the center of this system over the next couple of days is going to turn northward and northwestward and move into portions of northern Mexico, the tropical storm threat of tropical storm conditions extends all the way up through the, the uh, uh, lower and middle Texas coast up to the uh, Port O'Connor area where we have a tropical storm watch means that tropical storm conditions are possible within that watch area within 48 hours. So if those tropical storm conditions do occur, they do be expected to begin sometime during the day on Wednesday. So just as a reminder, this is going to be a sprawling system. It doesn't matter whether it becomes a tropical depression or a tropical storm. The impacts are going to begin starting tomorrow, especially with the heavy rainfall in portions of the Texas coast continuing into Wednesday and Thursday. And then the tropical storm force winds could arrive on the coast uh, as early as Wednesday in portions of that tropical storm watch area from Brownsville up to Port O'Connor. 
So again, know your safe place to go. If, you're, if there's a flood warning issued for your area, if you might have to evacuate and get to higher ground, make that plan now. Make sure you have multiple ways to get weather information through WIA alerts on your phone, uh, mobile apps through a NOAA weather radio, and stay tuned to any advice you're given by your local officials as we go through the event. We'll be issuing updates to the forecast here throughout the night and through the rest of the week from here at the National Hurricane Center. Uh, you can get more information on local impacts in your area by going to weather.gov and finding your local National Weather Service office. You can always come back here to hurricanes.gov and get more information here. We'll be back with more throughout the week. This is Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.